hey what is up guys welcome back to another youtube video at the world of ai in today's video we're going to be showcasing a new project which is called writing my own chat gpt code interpreter and this is something that was created by rick who is the main contributor of this project now this project is an open source project that aims to create an implementation of OpenAI's ChatGPT code interpreter. Now, as you may know, this is something that OpenAI is currently work working on and it's not actually released at this current moment. Now, the project provides a user interface where you can actually interact with OpenAI's model by asking it to specifically perform different types of tasks that relates to code. Now, the model then generates and executes the corresponding code to accomplish the requested given task. Now, the primary goal of this project is to enable users to communicate with OpenAI's model and natural language, as well as having it to generate executable code as a response. Now, providing a user-friendly interface, it simplifies the process as well as of interacting with the model and leveraging its capabilities. And you can see in this example of how nice of a simple UI they have created. And this is something that I'm gonna be showcasing as to how you can download. Now, the project's blog post, which we can see over here, is containing more detailed information on how you can use ChatGPT Code Interpreter. It also highlights some of the things such as the features as well as its underlying architecture, which we'll go through in the video later on. Now, it's recommended to read this post so you can get a better understanding. So I highly recommend that you check this out and I'll leave all the links in that one in the description below. So in today's video, we'll go as to what you can do with this as well as showing you guys how to download it and talking a little bit more about some of the use cases of it now if you guys haven't followed my actual twitter page please do so guys as i'm going to be posting a lot of content and a lot of news on this twitter page and then if you guys haven't subscribed please do so guys as i'm posting every single day the latest as well as the best news for you guys so definitely give this a subscribe uh, turn on the notification bell like this video and check out any of my previous videos if you haven't as there's a lot of content that you will definitely benefit from and with that thought guys let's get right into the video before we actually get into the installation process let us actually highlight some of the main features of ChatGPT code interpreter now one of the main things that we want to talk about is that you're able to do a lot of different features but one of its main thing is that you're able to upload files now the interpreter allows you to as a user to upload different types of files which enables the interaction with code and data stored locally on the actual application this feature like basically facilitates seamless integration of like external resources into the code generation and execution process of this application another thing you can do is download the files that you want you're able to get some of the generated files downloaded easily onto your desktop and you can then share it or save it to different places and this way you're able to have an easy access to the results of code that you were able to execute another thing that i wanted to talk about is context awareness now this is something that he talks about later on in the actual blog post but basically the interpreter maintains context awareness meaning that it's able to refer to previous messages and takes them into account when gathering or generating future code this allows it for more coherent as well as more contextual relevant interactions with the chatbot as well as through the user and the interpreter then also understands the conversation history so you're able to get better guided understanding now the next feature is its generated code feature which is one of the primary features of chat gpt code interpreter has its ability to generate code based off the natural language input users can also ask the model to perform specific tasks and the interpreter can generate corresponding code to accomplish the desired actions and this is a feature that abstracts away the need to users for users to manually write code and seamlessly activate the deployment process of code and lastly, the code execution feature, which the interpreter provides the capabilities to run the generated code using Python kernel. Now this allows users to execute the code and observe the results directly within the interpreter's user interface. And this is by executing the code, you're able to get the outcome, which users can then test and validate their ideas without leaving the platform itself. And I'll be showing you how you can actually play around with this later on in the video. Another thing I wanted to actually lastly focus on is you're able to switch between the two models, ChatGPT 3.5 as well as ChatGPT 4. Obviously, as we know, GPT 4 may uh, like get you more improved performances as well as get you the better capabilities of ChatGPT 4. But in this case, we're going to be using ChatGPT 3.5 as I do not have GPT 4. But in this case, if you really want to get more refined as well as getting the full capabilities of ChatGPT 4, 
you should definitely use this feature as well as this model. And with that thought, let's get on to the next feature where we talk a little bit more about the flowchart of this application. So firstly, you start off with the user input, and this is the interaction that begins with the user providing an input in the natural language to the GPT code interpreter. From this input, you go on to the next step, which is the query processing. And the input is then basically processed and it's then extracted towards relevant information such as a task to be performed or any associated parameters or files. And through this, you're able to get onto the next actual step, which is the actual prompt generation. And this is where the base, it's based off of the input and the prompt is then constructed to provide a contextual representation as well as the instructions to the underlying GPT model from the actual previous query method. And this is the step-by-step -step process as to how you can get the generative answer. And through once the actual answer is sent towards the GPT model, you're able to get a constructed prompt that is passed through this model, which then generates a response. And from this response, you're typically able to include generated code that can fulfill the requested task. And once that is then sent, you're able to get to the next actual step, which is the code execution. And from this, you're able to get the generated code that is executed using the available Python kernel, which you can see over here. And that this step allows you as well as involves running the code and the producing the desired output or performing the specific requirements that you gave it at the initial input. And obviously after that, you get onto the next step, which is the result presentation. And this is where the interpreter collects the output or the results of the code execution and then presents it to the user. And there's also different things such as an user feedback, which you have the option to then revamp the actual prompt that was outputted and get a better generated code and this is the last step which is the iteration which is the flow then returns the user input stage and allows for further interaction based off of the actual input that you gave it initially so that you're able to get better uh, capabilities or a better idea as to how you can generate better code next time you use the actual application. Alrighty, now let's get to the next step where we can actually start installing this application locally on our desktop. So first things first, you need to have Git installed, which is something that helps you clone the repository of GitHub onto your desktop. Secondly, you will need Python, which is your code editor. And lastly, you will need Visual Studio Code as this is something that will help you edit certain lines of prompts in your desktop. And with that case, Let's get to the next step, which we have to start copying the actual repository. So first things first, you want to go on the GitHub after you install the actual application that you need for this. So you want to get onto this link, which I'll leave in the description below. Click on this green button, copy the repository link. And what you want to do now is open up command prompt. Once you have that open, you can then type in the command git clone and paste the link that you just copied. Now what this will do is it will start copying the repository onto your desktop. Now what you wanna do is then write the actual file name, which is git gpt, sorry, dash code dash ui. Once you're in this folder, we can get onto the next step. But in this case, I don't think I have the folder name that's correct. But let me get right back to you once I figure that out. Sorry guys, I kind of made a rookie mistake, but you write CD and then put the actual file name that we inputted. Now, once you're in the actual file, you will need to start installing the dependencies onto your desktop. So what you can do is copy this actual command. And what you will now do is paste it over here and it will start to actually start installing it onto your desktop. You can get rid of the plus sign, or not the plus sign, but the dollar sign. So what you can do is delete it space and click enter and it'll start installing it onto your desktop it'll take about a couple minutes and once that is done i'll be right back to you guys now once you have finished installing all the dependencies onto your desktop what you can now do is open up visual studio code and this is where we're going to be inputting our own api key so what you want to do is open up the folder that you have just installed which will be gpt uh, ui i'm gonna take a couple seconds to find it right here and once you can open it up, you can trust the authors and then you can go on to the actual input where you will be editing the code. 
So once you have uploaded the file, you can actually start using the .n file to upload your OpenAI API key. So you can actually do that within the actual application, which I'll show you later on, but you can also do it using Visual Studio Code. And this is by going on the kernel connection and inputting your key over here. And once you're done that, you can just click save and input your key. But in this case, I'm gonna be showing you the other option, which is going through your actual application and inputting your own API key. So what you wanna do next is type in GPT code, open up command prompt, paste this command, and it will then launch it on your local host, which you can see right here. And that is completely it as to how you can install it. Now, what you can now do is go on your open API key, create a new key, copy this, I'll delete it after, so don't even worry about telling me. Input your key, press OK, and then you can start playing around with it. You can use different models. If you have GPT-4 access, then definitely recommend that you play around with it. But in this case, I actually don't, so there's no point of me actually playing with it. So I'm just going to be playing around with GPT-3.5. Now let's get on to the next focus where we'll be playing around as to what you can do with this application. So guys, to save you guys time, I just inputted some prompts to actually help you get a better idea of what this actual code interpreter can do. So I've actually found a snakes and ladder game online and I copied and pasted the code onto this website. And what I told it to do is refine the actual text. You can obviously upload the file, but I didn't actually uh, input it into a Pi like file. So I just put it into a TXT. So it wasn't actually upload like actually able to refine the code because it wasn't able to read it properly. So you, to actually have it like read the code properly, you got to upload it to a Pi for, or a file. So what's what I did in this case is that I just copied and pasted the code into the prompt text like button over here and I inputted it. And what I told it to do is refine the code. And what it then did is that it then actually regenerated the code and made it more refined. And then it also give you like an input of what you can do uh, as well as give you the rules as to what as to how you can actually operate it and that is easy as that guys as to what you can do with this application you can refine code get it to get some more advice on different types of things that you should input and certain things like that to help you improve your code for different use cases you can upload different files and you can also download the files as well as the code that you have over here so this is one of the great things about this actual model as well as this application and i hope you found this video quite informative as to what you can do with this actual application of uh get as well as writing my own chat gpt code interpreter and with that case guys i'll leave all the links in the description below make sure you follow my twitter page if you guys haven't already make sure you subscribe turn on the notification bell and check out any of my previous videos if you guys haven't guys so with that thought guys thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys next time peace out fellas have an amazing day i'll see you soon